Well, Canada is supposed to share some of that cooler air with us uh, starting today for the next through the weekend, and uh, we we would welcome that. Hopefully, we'll get some moisture with it. The uh, row crops need moisture. Uh, we've had approaching three weeks now, 95 to 105 degree weather, uh, day in and day out, with no moisture uh, to speak of, and um, time to replenish the earth, so to speak. Okay, today is uh, when people come in and they start to actually get into analysis and going back and checking history and back testing. One of the questions that always gets thrown at me is, why is this Friday uh, each month uh, such a big day? I mean, why does it have so much range? And that's because it's of the um, unemployment news. And it typically is the biggest news day of the month unless the Fed FOMC meeting potentially is going to change policy, then the FOMC minute meeting and announcement would take precedence over unemployment numbers. So uh, it's a big day. It's very, very volatile. A lot of people will trade this market with a, um, a limit sell and a limit buy um, on the note. Um, about 24 ticks away from where the market is when the news is scheduled to hit. Uh, right, so they place those orders right before the news hits. And usually you got some wiggle room. Sometimes it stops at 16 ticks, but this uh, 16 to 24 tick scoop order is what I call them. You're going to scoop it up based on the news is um, a pretty effective trade, and it gives you a lot of wiggle room. This market, the financials have been run down into this morning's news. Uh, the trade that offers the most potential on a trade taken before the news would be a long because a lot of bad news is built into this report. So what is the bad news? They're looking for 230K in non-farm payroll, 220 private non-farm payroll, unemployment 6.1. Average work week, 34.5, and hourly earnings up two-tenths. The focus is non-farm payroll, that's one, and then number two will be the unemployment rate, rate at 6.1. Uh, so there really is just no way uh, to get around um, the risk that's associated with this type of trading. Now, the traders that do tr do take this uh, trade uh, will trade smaller size. And the traders that do take this trade are experienced, and they do have a bottom line. They're profitable. But they won't trade a full position. They'll trade a uh, partial position. And it's the only way you can really benefit from the news, because once the initial move is over, um, then the market's going to settle into development. And there's, not a, there's very little opportunity uh, in this area. So um, right now, um, the expected news is 230,000. That in and of itself would be a negative for the financials. That means the labor market is returning. Uh, the Fed can cut interest rates, can raise interest rates sooner rather than later. Uh, I, along with a lot of others, don't see how the Fed can ever raise interest rates given the um, softness of the economy. But uh, that is the argument. And uh, it will take us probably, if it does come in at this number, it was expected, probably go a little bit lower off the headline than profit taking would ensue as those that got short from well above um, book profits before the weekend uh, hits. The um, way to take this trade, and you, you if you want to, not, ha not absorb or be exposed to the risk of uh, having a position on before the news is, is that the news hits on that first correction. You enter the market. And um, then if the market does not extend the current range like this, you exit. And then on the, um, as far as financials go, if you want to trade developing value, 
which is the mode, uh, and you'll see it forming. It's usually, uh, when you get started, plus or minus 3, 30 seconds. And the amplitude decreases. I mean, let's say it was bullish news, so the market runs up. They're going to come back, and they're going to find out where support is. Then they're going to go retest this high right here. And if it's not taken out, uh, they're going to come down. They know that support is right here, so it'll probably stop a little bit above that. It'll rally back up. It'll probably come down inside um, the uh, first rotation's high, and so on and so forth. And that's that amplitude that you see decreasing. as the day progresses. So there are three ways to take this particular trade. One position in front of the news, um, one on the first correction after the news, and the third is let the dust settle, come in and trade developing value. Uh, the trade with the most potential is to be long or short before the news hits. OK, here we are at 29. Where is resistance? Basically, 31 to 01 would be 1. Three and a half to four would be two. Seven to eight would be three. So if it weren't for the news right now, we'd be trying to sell 31s to 03s and then 7s to 11. On the buy side, we've got this low volume number down here. We'd be trying to buy 25s to 21s and then 17s to 13s. But these are areas of potential support that I see right now um, that might yield a buy or a sell um, once the news hits. So we'll, we'll, we'll watch this, um, and we'll see what happens. That's about all that you can do. But this is a news day trade, and it's, it's always simple. If you know the news, you have the trade. The trick is knowing the news. Now, what the first read we're going to get on this is right before the news hits, or they'll, they'll run it up or they'll run it down into the news. And there's some pretty savvy players out there, and three out of four times, uh, they'll be right about that. One out of four, they'll be in left field. So what, what could turn this market on a dime and send it roaring back up? Well, number one would be... Um, a uh, big miss on the uh, non-farm payroll number. And number two would be an increase in the unemployment rate. So that's what we have to watch for. If the uh, number comes in higher than forecast, my guess is is that uh, the fin financials will be a bit lower off of that. But they won't. Uh, they probably won't break because they've been run down into the news. OK, the knob spread is holding overnight, but it has come down quite a bit. Next week is auction week, so I imagine the knob spread will find its low on Monday or Tuesday morning, uh, then trade back up if this morning's news is as expected. So at 138 even, last rotate up stopped at 6. The overnight session high is 13. So on this particular chart, uh, the sell would be 7 to 11. Uh, the spill came from 19, so 15 to 19 would be sell 2. The buy would be 29 to 25. Then 17 to 21 for buy 2. It is a news day trade. So we'll, we've got these as reference points. We will address them after the news hits. But these are areas of potential support or resistance. Know the news, you got the trade. A little more aggressive on the uh, spread um, to get started because there's a chance people will position today before next week's news. OK, internationally, I, I can't see that um, uh, the, the big announcement out of NATO is, is that they're going to position 4,000 troops that can move into Poland, um, Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania, Czechoslovakia within 48 hours. Now, 
if you're Russia and you're planning on invading and taking these countries, we cross the border. Now what does NATO have to do? How are they going to get those troops into those places? Are they going to airdrop them? Uh, how are they going to do that? Are they going to drive them across the border? I mean, what's the purpose and what's the function? Normally when you station troops inside a potential uh, war-causing country, they're on the ground there. They are the tripwire. If the invader crosses into that country, he is going to kill or engage uh, opposition troops, allies of that particular country. So what did NATO do? Uh, they symbolically put something up there. They're going to show that they're really tough guys, but there's no substance or teeth in it. And would you as NATO, can, I mean now Obama went over there and he drew a red line in Poland and he drew a red line in um, Estonia promised them all sorts of help, just like the promises that were made to the Ukraine to give up their nuclear weapons. If you were Poland, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, Latvia, Estonia, would you count on help from the United States? I wouldn't. So uh, I, I think, you know, NATO, they get to do, they get to party, they get to talk, they get to meet. Uh, on somebody else's dollars, they get to come out with really kind of a meaningful uh, st meaningless statement when they put it out there. So don't think that Russia has been deterred at all. The question is, is how much territory does Russia want to grab over the next couple of years before a new administration comes in? And nobody knows the answer to that. So gold, uh, we've got this um, the spill right here from 68 that held up. Uh, we wanted to sell that area yesterday when we left. We just touched it overnight. Unemployment numbers come in higher than forecast. Uh, and, uh, more, We don't get the non-farm payrolls. It comes in less than 230. Uh, could rally this market a little bit, but it won't change the overall direction, short-term direction, which I think is lower. Uh, if they come in less than forecast, we could rally, and we could rally a bit because, the mar again, this market has been sold down into the numbers. So the trade that offers the most potential is a long trade. Uh, we wanted to buy, I think our number two buy area yesterday was the um, 58 to 60 area. Um, we did get to our number two area, so we're going to leave that as buy one. If we break that, I think we're headed for 50 which will bring in some profit taking, so that'll be buy two. Uh, on the sell side, we had um, oh, excuse me, I had the wrong piece of paper. That's what the gold numbers were so a day ago. And now on gold, we had 60, 62 is a buy, then 55, 57. We had a sell at 68 to 70. So. Um, we pretty well caught at the edge of the market. Gave up a little bit on the uh, buy side. I think the uh, the numbers are still good. Sell one at 68 to 70, and 73, 75 for sell two. I think we're headed lower once we absorb this morning's news, whatever it might may be. And again, if you all are in London, you this uh, the euro and gold really, really, really trade well. London time. London is the dog. We are the tail when it comes to gold. Um, same with the euro. Currencies start in Europe. They do not start in the United States. And you can get good trades off in crude oil because of, uh, that's correct, Fitz, currencies. Europe is the dog. The United States and the rest of the world is the tail. Okay, looking at crude oil, nothing that came out of the NATO meeting really has changed anything. But um, the supply on a day-by-day -day basis is increasing. It's coming from North Dakota, Texas, the other states in the United States, um, Libya of all places, dictators 
tyrants need cash flow to Iran and Iraq. So the supply is going up. And you can make a pretty strong case that uh, economic growth around the globe um, is in question. The magnitude of such, everybody is revising their projections down. Uh, smaller cars are selling, even in the United States, as people try to cut their transportation costs. So crude oil, uh, when you look at this, we got a 95.50, 96. Get that yourselves on. And on the buy side, we got a 92. 5093. Then we have to be at 9432. Looks like we're po pointed lower. Volume is a P. Um, TPOs are a B. So I think we have a chance to go a little bit lower. So we'll make 375, 94, even buy one. And then 93 and a quarter, 50 by two. On the uh, sell side, we'll make to get started, 75 to the buck, sell one. I mean, that's where resistance is. And 25 to 50 for sell two. Uh, so not, not changing anything in the structure, not doing anything different than what we have been doing. Okay, the euro, when we left the euro yesterday, we saw that uh, some of them would take profits in the overnight session, that we would actually probably trade a little higher. Uh, just profit taking before this morning's news. If they weren't able to break it early in session, uh, then it would trade higher. And what were they not able to do early in the session? They weren't early to break it. They did retest that level. Um, so yesterday, uh, we had a 25 to 35 buy. And we're currently at 54. That was a pretty good, pretty good call. And then we had a 65 to 75 sell. Uh, that was a pretty good call too. So uh, you had information in your hands well before the fact that if you'd taken the trades, you would have prospered. It would have been profitable. We caught both sides of the market, um, our buy zone and sell zone. And the trick is taking the trades. So we got this two-letter ledge at 73. We have the spill from uh, the buck. So uh, we'll make 65, 75, sell one. I mean, that's where resistance is. And then we'll make 90 to the buck, sell two. On the buy side, London's last rotate down stopped at 33. We're at 54. So I'm, I'm going to leave it 25 to 35. And my idea is the same as it was yesterday, short covering, protecting profits into the weekend. Okay, to make calls like this, what am I doing? I'm putting it into the market into context. What's most likely to happen? What's, what's the impact of tomorrow's news? What are the dynamics? It's been a short week. It's been a hard sell all the way down. It's Friday. Maybe somebody covers their shorts. They take profits before the weekend. Um, if you're a swing trader, uh, that would be your inclination. Okay, uh, to the E-mini magic here. Um, uh, it has been sold. Uh, some people are attributing the selling to uh, Europe's um, the handing of the the mantle from the United States to the Europe. Europe is going to provide a trillion dollars worth of uh, fiscal stimulus now for the markets. The United States has done it since 2009. Um, so perhaps the United States is going to tighten, sell stocks. So. This market has been run down into this morning's news. The numbers, if as forecast, are bullish. They would be supportive. Uh, 230 for non-farm payrolls, 220 for private non-farm payrolls, 6.1. Next number that will be scrutinized is the average work week, which is 
pretty rock solid at 34 and a half, and then wages up two tenths. So that's one, and that's two. That's the news focus. So the market has been run down into this. This news, if it were to come out as forecast, uh, would be supportive. So I think the market could rally uh, off of this news. Uh, if this is not the case, then the breakout came in this 85, 87 area. So right now, just looking at the structure because we're lower, this buying this 80, say 86, 88 area would be buy one, and then our 80, 82 would be buy two. If it weren't for the news, play for a little bit lower. And uh, on the sell side, London stopped at 98. We're at 91, so we would have a 95, 97 sell one without news, and then basically 2,000 for sell two. We do have news, though, and so if you wanted to position in front of the news because it's been sold yesterday and in the overnight you would position from the long side. Doesn't mean you're right, you're just, they've built some bad news into the market. Now, this number comes in less than 200,000. I think the market sells, but it'll probably find buyers because the Fed has to continue its support. So again, the long side, there's always a couple of reasons to buy. One's the Fed, and the other one is the economic news could be better. Uh, the economic news comes in better than forecast. Okay, it'll take at least 15 minutes to get everything up and posted. I'm going to get busy on that. Uh, we have news here in, what, 18 minutes. We'll be back and comment after that. All the news is over in one swell foop this morning. Um, after that, we'll be trying to trade development. Be with you shortly.